Welcome friends to another 40k video. Today we look to Magnus, Master of Prospero by Graham McNeil. It begins with Magnus on the planet Morningstar. During the Great Crusade, it's a settled planet. There is a great storm there. The skies above the city are filled with ships trying to escape. Magnus meets with another Primarch, one of his brothers, Perturabo. Magnus tells him of the knowledge he is seeking on this planet. This storm was being caused by a quick reversal of the planet's magnetic poles. What was causing this was not known, but many had died. Magnus and his thousand sons had picked up a message from an astropath to find this place. Magnus attempts to find and rescue the planetary governor. Magnus had only met him once, but he notes in the book that a mind is as distinctive as a finger pad. Magnus sends one of his sons to look beneath the city for some hidden knowledge. He tells those sons going of a symbol that will guide them. They go and they find a Terran colony ship. Magnus, meanwhile, continues his search. And as he does, people find him and gather around him like he is some sort of saviour. He finds the governor freezing the flammable liquid pouring from the rhino he is trapped in. He retrieves the governor from that situation by taking the vehicle apart into its basic parts. Magnus then heals him and soldiers nearby come to help the gathered crowd away. But Magnus, though he will deny this of course, is actually wrong on this. The soldiers gather there, attack Magnus and begin to slaughter their own people. Magnus at this point is hurt for the first time by a tank shot. Another then bends around his kind shield. A further one is swept away with a movement of his arm. It caused debris to fall on the humans nearby, so he threw up a shield to save as many as he could. He crushed a rhino into a ball and used it to demolish another. More shots continued. He took control of the crew of another tank and turned those on each other. So it was Baneblade versus Executioner. They detonated each other. A last tank attacked him and he pulled that tank apart. Every rivet unmoored, every screw unthreaded, every welded seam undone. Magnus asks one of the crew why they attacked the governor. He says it's their time. He and the others on his side want to die in the storm and be reborn. You think death will, will be your salvation? I know it will be. Magnus then says, Then I am doing you a favour and snapped the man's neck. Magnus, filled with the power he had drawn on within Morning Star, heals himself and flies a storm bird as tortured magnetic fields try to bend it. Meanwhile, many civilians were being brought on board the Lux Ferrum as the storm neared and it was knocked from the sky and Magnus tries to stop its destruction and the death of those on board. Even he is not sure of his actions. With the scarabs his sons wore, there was a conduit between father and sons. Their power and love flowed into him and he shaped it. Magnus wonders if, with this, he will eclipse his father's deeds. The gunship crashed and Magnus left it behind. The belly of the vast ship, the Lux Ferrum, was falling down, only around a hundred metres now above the ground. Magnus thrust his arms to the sky with a word of change. This unleashed the shared power that had been building within him. He drew on raptures, formulae, he had only read of in the Emperor's Secret Vaults, a wave that could blind in power flowed from him. He was a titan at the end of the world, the bottom of the ship hit his barrier and the mind of the Primarch expands in a lattice of geometric progression. The expense drove him to his knees and the ship kept falling lower. He was becoming stretched to burnout and he had nothing more to give. Araman approached and aided him. Araman shared what he could with his father. It was a pebble, but that could start an avalanche and it began to work and Magnus stood at the centre of a circle of power, channeling incomprehensible energies to achieve the impossible. Magnus and his sons stood in the crater, 
and so pushed up on the belly of the ship as the remains of the vessel settled onto its platform. It would not fly again, but those inside were safe. Magnus was too exhausted to speak. He did not trust his limbs to function, nor his mind to form a coherent answer. Twenty-four of his sons lay dead, dust pouring from their plate. Magnus, Ironman and one other only survived. Magnus is exhausted and he begins to fall. Petraba catches him. Later Magnus learns that Morningstar is rushing to embrace its own extinction, said Phosis to Carr. The last 30 hours have been a situation where a sharp rise in attacks by the sons of Shaitan, bombings, spree killings and random acts of individual psychosis. We're seeing a wave of mass suicides in the refugee camps and escalating incidences of familial violence resulting in bloodshed. The looks firm, asked Magnus, fully evacuated, said Araman, but there is something else you should know. Magnus then learns that those he sent away seeking knowledge have not returned, and he says that he leaves no brother behind. Perturabo says that the people of this planet at the seeing the blinding amount of energy he commanded are calling him the Crimson King. I wonder if that name will stick. And then Perturabo shows him that there is something unnatural within the storm. They then part Perturabo to fight this thing and Magnus to find his missing sons. Magnus finds one area is untouched from the storms and sees an old colony ship, its door torn off. He goes inside, awakening glow globes and seeing cryotubes. Magnus finds some of his sons, but they have changed. Perturabo, meanwhile, finds the edge of a tectonic plate and a machine that's pushing it against another. The storms made from the geomagnetic field were deliberate. Magnus sees a thing has entered the flesh of his son. It also refers to itself as Legion or Shaitan, and it's those who ventured from old earth and died on board the ship. Other marines are brought to life by this thing, and it speaks. Their minds were already remade in our image. They became our heralds of the end times, the seed bearers of this world's doom. And it wants Magnus. So, brother fights possessed brother. Those dead in the tubes are raised in their rotting flesh, in their hundreds. Elsewhere with Perturabo, the Iron Warriors destroy the machine they found, whilst Magnus felt his legion's pain. He feels what happens to one victim and sees the truth due to old night. Back in that time, when too many psychers emerged and caused chaos, those who came to Morning Star to avoid this situation took the psychers in the ship and ended them. And so, old night never came to Morning Star. But this death legion was born. Magnus says they saved the world and that when you love something you will sacrifice anything to save it and he fights Shaitan. Araman buys him a distraction and he snaps the wrists of the body that Shaitan is in and he says I am Magnus master of Prospero and I was taught by the emperor of man the greatest psyche in the galaxy. He looked deep within Shaitan. Against that, you have nothing. He forced the creature from his son's body. When it emerged as a swirling red maelstrom, he pulls the souls there into the book of Magnus as a record, and they would also live on within his book. Then he, his brother, and those that still live, leave the planet, and it is destroyed in their wake at Magnus's command to remove every seed of the demon that had been there. So now, friends, I turn things over to you. Drop me a comment down below.